That'd be good, huh? Yeah. That's oh, I love you, man. Love you too. Take care. Yeah. Sure everybody's working, huh? Yeah, they're under control. All right, cool. See you later. Yeah, bye. It's about to get What's up everyone? This week we're going to give the lathe some love. So I'm going to show you some different tips and tricks and fundamentals that'll be useful for either beginners or someone that knows a little bit about machining. Today I'm going to be going over a couple of can cycles. I use them all the time and it's something that sounds a little bit easy but sometimes people have trouble wrapping their heads around either forgetting what the code is or remembering what order to put things on. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about that. The two we're gonna go over is gonna be a facing cycle and an OD cycle. And I use these all the time, particularly the OD cycle because I use them to make jaws also. The main reason we use a can cycle is so we can make a really large program with only a few lines. Something like a roughing cycle where you have the same kind of movement just working its way down. You can make that in four lines rather than having pages and pages of codes. I use these codes all the time because it's very easy to change and edit the program just by changing a few numbers. Like for example, if I need to make jaws, I just change a couple of numbers in the can cycle and I've already got a jaw program. So I actually keep these programs in my 9000 auxiliary program section here, which I can hide by changing setting 23 on and off. So these are two basic can cycles we have. I've got a facing cycle. And we got an OD cycle here, which can also be used for ID, and I'll go over that. The start of the program is pretty basic. We start off with what tool you're using. So tool four, offset four, T4 or four. I've got my work offset, which I put an exclamation point over here, just because I tend to change the work offset on my setup programs and my auxiliary programs. So just so whoever's running this knows exactly which work offset I'm using. I put that little point there. In this case, we're using G54. Sometimes if I'm making a jaw program and I want to keep my jaw programs offset in case I have to reboard the jaws or whatever, I'll board those on G59. So sometimes I change that. We got our two lines of spindle code here. So we're telling the machine how fast we're going. G96 S500. We're spinning M3, spinning clockwise. And then we got our first movement. Because this machine has such a giant tail stock, I actually put a first Z movement here, just that I know that's gonna clear the machine. So, so I've got a G0, Z4 inch, and that's just on this particular machine where I have a giant tail stock, and I don't wanna get in the way of that. So safe distance, Z4 inches. The next line, we're gonna go down to X. So for this part that this part was for, we had a part that was five and a quarter diameter. I'm starting my first X number at X 5.5. So this first X number is gonna be the very first X that this can cycle is gonna to go to for the facing cycle. So we wanna make sure that it's staying a little bit above the material. We don't want it exactly what our OD size is for the face. We need it a little bit bigger so it clears. The material we were cutting was five and a quarter diameter. Our first X number is five and a half inches. So X 5.5. We need to have that a little bit bigger so it doesn't run into the material. So the first X number before the can cycle, that's exactly where your machine is gonna start cutting. So the biggest diameter in the face cycle. The next line, we have a Z move and my coolant command. So we have a Z one inch M8, turn the coolant on. And that's gonna be the start of my cut. So this face cycle, I wanted to take one inch off the front of the material. So you're gonna put how much material in Z you wanna take off. So however long your part is that you wanna cut off, that's what you're going to put into the Z number. So I wanted to take an inch off of the material. So Z one inch. Now we're starting our actual can cycle. G72, that's the facing cycle on the hots. We got P101, Q102. P and Q are going to tell the machine what block to start and finish. So if you look ahead on this cycle, we have a N101 and an N102. N101 is going with the P101, and that's saying that's the start of the can cycle. Q102 and N102 are saying that's the end of the can cycle. So that's the section that the machine is going to look at for the code, and that's what's going to create the can cycle. The next lines, we have U0, W0. That's telling the machine how much material in X and Z we're going to be leaving on the can cycle. So U corresponds with X. W corresponds with Z. 
you're probably not going to be using the U cycle too much on a facing cycle, but for the W on a facing cycle, we can change that. So if you wanted to leave five thousandths for a finishing pass, you can change this W to W.005 and that will leave five thousandths of material on the cycle. And then we got our decode, which you're going to remember as depth of cut. So this right now, it's set to take fifty thousandths passes. You can change that. It's going to depend on what material you're cutting and how far your part's sticking out. So you can change this to whatever you think your machine can handle. Just for an example, we're going to do 100 thou passes. And then F, of course, is going to be your feed rate. I've got this set for inches per revolution, so feed rate of 9 thousandths. And you can see in my can cycle, I've also got a F number here that I left in there. This F number is going to actually override whatever's in the can cycle itself. So make sure you set this to whatever you want your can cycle to cut. We got our N101 and N102 blocks, which I mentioned earlier. This is the meat of our program. You can see it's a facing cycle, so it's not actually going to have too much in there. The first one, N101, we have G0, Z0. For the facing cycle, I want it to cut to the face of my part, so I have it at Z0. That's going to be the finish face number, so that's where I want the tool to end up at. So I have Z0. For the next line, I have a G1 an X0, and I've got a feed rate number, which I mentioned, it's gonna be overwritten by that, but we wanna put whatever we're gonna be finishing our part at, so I'm actually gonna put feed 3000. So this is actually the line where the machine's gonna be coming down in X at. For the N101 and the N102, we're just telling it what direction our machine is cutting in. So it's wrapping to Z0, we had it at X 5.5, and then it's feeding down to X0. So if you think about it, it's just going down and feeding down in a straight line. What it's going to do, it's going to copy this and it's going to repeat it within 100,000 increments, which we told in D. It's going to start at one inch, go in 100 thousandths, feed down to X0, come out, wrap it back up to 5.5, and then it's going to go in 100 thousandths more and just repeat itself until it reaches Z0. Afterwards, we have a rapid move. Just make sure you clear your material here. And then we have our home commands here, G28U0, G28W0, and then an M30. So that was the face can cycle. I actually use it all the time if I've got like a setup piece that I need to cut down to a certain length and I need it the same length as the rest of the pieces. I'll go ahead and simulate it here so you all can see what program I just made. You can see the face can cycle looks good. Coming down from X five and a half inches, going down to X zero. So here I've got the OD can cycle. This one's going to be a G71. It's very similar to the other program. I got my starting points right before the start of the can cycle. So this one's going to be starting at X six and a half inches, bringing it a little bit closer to start. Z 50 thousandths. I already know that this particular can cycle, you're going to set it to whatever, whatever's the safe Z distance here. I've already faced my material on this can cycle, so I'm starting at 50 thousandths away. We're going to be using a G71. This is an OD and ID roughing cycle. I've got my P105, Q106. You notice that they're different than the earlier can cycle. If you have more than one can cycle in your program, make sure that you have different P and Q numbers along with your N numbers so that they don't mix it up with the earlier program. So I'm using N101 and 102 in the face cycle. I needed different end numbers here, so I'm using 105 and 106 here. This is an OD cycle, and it's a roughing cycle, so I want to leave a little bit of material. So the U over here, I have it set to leave 10 thousandths of material in the X. And the W, I have set to leave 5 thousandths of material. Got a 90 thousandths step to cut, and a feed rate of 12 thousandths. When writing your can cycle, make sure you keep all your letters in the same order. Sometimes the machine doesn't like it if you mix up the letters. So I always do P, Q, U, W, D, and F. Now we got our N105 and N106 here. It's an OD cycle, so it's a little bit more of a program. The can cycles, and particularly the OD cycle, is very picky about what direction you write your can cycle in. So for the OD can cycle and the ID can cycle, make sure you have everything going in one direction. For the OD cycle, we're going to start from the lowest X number and work our way up. For an ID cycle, we're going to do it the opposite. We'd start from the biggest X and work our way down. So we're going to go from the smallest X number I have and work our way up. So we got N105, G0, X4.99, and then I've got a G1. I'm starting to feed, 
feeding into Z0. I got my feed rate there. It's gonna be overwritten by this feed rate. Then we're working our way up, and this is actually gonna be putting a little chamfer on the front of my OD. So I'm on a small 25 thousandths chamfer. I'm going Z negative 25 thousandths. I'm doubling that 25 thousandths, and I'm adding it to the 4.99 that I had earlier. So it's gonna be X 5.04. So I'm taking that 25 thousandths, which I want a 25 thousandths chamfer, but to make it a 45 degree chamfer, I need to double that for the X. So we're gonna take the 25 thousandths, times it by two, 50 thousandths, and I'm gonna add it to the 4.99 that I started at earlier. So it's gonna be X 5.04. And this is just gonna be a simple can cycle that's putting a little chamfer on the front and coming across the OD of the part. So the next line is gonna be N106, G1, and we're just gonna go down in Z whatever depth I need. So this particular case, we're gonna go down Z 1.25. At the end of the can cycle, it's gonna go back up to X 6.5, and then it's gonna wrap it out to this number here, G0, Z.25. That's where it's gonna wrap it out. Then my G28's here and it's gonna home out. For these cycles, I said that I save them in my machine and I pull them out whenever I need them once I know they work. And you can change these X numbers to whatever you want. So say that I have an inch and a half piece of material that I wanna cut down to one inch. All I have to do is change a few numbers. So I wanna take an inch and a half piece of material and cut that down to one inch. All I have to do is change my starting point here. I'm gonna change that to inch and a half. That's the size of my material. I wanted to cut it down to one inch. I'm gonna put it there, one inch, a 25 thousandths, 45 degree chamfer on the front of the part. We're gonna subtract 50 thousandths from that one inch. So 950. And say that I wanna go down an inch and a half on my part. We're just gonna change that to Z 1.5. Okay, this is the OD roughing cycle. Cool. This looks good. You can see we got our little chamfer right here. It just comes straight across. This is actually a program I used for a set of ID jaws that I made on this machine. It's very similar. It's just a step jaw, so it has a little bit more program code here. But it's the same deal. You can't have anything going down or in a different direction. It all has to be flowing the same, same way. I just have a few more lines because I was putting a radius on my jaws. These were actually step jaws that I wanted a little bit of clearance on the back. So you can see it was feeding up and then going in a little bit. But you can see here, it's starting at the lowest X number and it's working its way up. So you can see it gets bigger. So that's the most important thing. Just make sure it's always going in the same direction. This was an example on the Haas, but your machines, I don't know what you're running, but your machine should have something similar to it. For example, in the Mori we have, in the manual, they actually list how to make that kind of can cycle. So you can look it up and your machine should have something similar. Can cycles are super useful. It saves you time so you don't have to program by hand a whole bunch of lines of code. You can just change a few numbers here and you have a program. Thanks for watching. I hope this is very helpful and stay tuned because we're gonna have lots of lathe tips and tricks this week. Tyson's a CNC, boom.